Hey, this is Gary from Propane. You are watching Talking Records. It seems like Europe is on your tour map more often than the USA. In the first half of our career, it was actually the opposite. We, we toured the States quite a bit more often than, than Europe. And it's, pre it's pretty simple. I mean, it's, it's just that we, get, we have to go where the opportunities are. And um, we noticed that around, um, I would say around 2003, 2004, things started to change a little bit. And um, we felt that we were getting more opportunities here in Europe. And um, we were playing the States quite often uh, up until that point. And we felt that, like, that it deserved um, a bit of a break and that we probably shouldn't uh, tour the U.S. As, um, as much because we saw that our numbers were going down. Um, and so we figured, okay, we'll tour the States, you know, once every three, four years or something like that. And that's pretty much what we've done since then. Um, and, and it's been... I think since 2015 or 2016 since we've toured the States. It's not a secret that right now bands uh, make money mostly from touring and merchandise. Yeah. So how does it look uh, from your perspective right now, being in a band that is that have a cult status? It takes a, it takes a certain amount of funding, you know, to, to, to really break out and, and, and um, turn your band into an international success, so to speak. In our case, it came from uh, our early record labels. You know, they had uh, they put a lot of money into the band. Energy Records in the United States they they funded um, uh, the band tremendously from the beginning. You know, they got us on a lot of great tours, and we were supporting um, in those days uh, Testament and uh, DRI and Body Count and Exodus, and we had all, we got on all these great tours. And as a result, we we got a, a very a very nice following for ourselves and um, our fan base was growing and growing and I wonder if we did if we never had that financial support early on you know whether we would uh, be able to develop ourselves to this point you know I really wonder about that it, it, it's it's good if you have uh, some good funding you know and some financial backing in the beginning in the early stages because there's, there's so many bands all the time and there's so many different labels that are that are uh, paying good money to get their bands on these tours, you know. So it's a very competitive environment. And, um, you know, I, I think that we were one of those bands that um, we, we were good at what we did. You know, when we, when we came out of the box with Fra Foul Taste of Freedom, we had a solid album. <coughs> it got really great reviews, it got good exposure. But we got lucky too, you know, we were, we were at the right place at the right time, you know, just playing, uh, you know, hardcore music when it was a bit fashionable. Well, more than a year ago, you had this um, unfortunate incident in Belgium. I wanted to ask, uh, how do you feel right now? <coughs> it's not something that you could just bounce bounce back from. You know, it took a uh, a lot to recover from that. I came back to touring sooner than I, I should have. That's for sure. And um, I have some lasting uh, effects from it. Unfortunately, you know, I have a lot of nerve damage in my face, so I, I have uh, I lost a lot of feeling around particularly around the, some of the fracture sites in here and over here. And um, my, um, my jaw doesn't really, it doesn't go together perfectly, you know, like, like it did before the, the incident, you know. And I still have some cracked teeth that I'm dealing with, but I, I get them repaired a little bit at a time because I don't want to sit in, <laughs> in the dentist's chair. 
longer than I have to in one in one sitting, you know. So I got the bot the bottom of my jaw repaired and uh, um, some fractured teeth repaired and a couple of pull, a couple of them pulled. Um, so you know, it's it's been uh, uh, quite a recovery, you know, and I, I'm not a hundred percent, you know. I, I still feel a lot of um, effects from it that it's some of it of, of which is a bit hard to explain I f feel uh, uh, I j you just don't feel the same you know I feel just a little bit f like spacey sometimes I guess you could say I don't remember um, much from the incident because when I was hit in the back of my head I was I was unconscious so most of the damage that was done to me was when I was unconscious so you know, I, I saw the, 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 the closed caption television on the video cameras from what happened. It was pretty horrific was pretty to, to witness, but I had to see it because uh, I had to identify certain people. So I, I actually saw the footage at the police station. It was pretty crazy. As a socially and politically sensitive lyricist, I'm wondering what kind of lyrics will you write on a, a Voice of Rebellion successor with all these things that are happening right now in the USA with uh, President Trump making new scandal every day with um, school shootings happening yeah. so frequently with uh, growing racism. The stuff like this gives you a lot of inspiration for lyrics? Generally speaking, I, I think, you know. Uh, but I, I don't think that um, I really want to get overly political with my lyrics anymore because uh, this is a different era now, you know. Uh, um, everybody is an armchair politician. And I felt like in, you know, in the 90s, like when we first started, um, I felt that, that uh, you know, there was a there was a need to kind of be a, a, a political barometer, you know, for the political climate out there and sort of, you know, inform people, inform the uninformed of what's happening, you know, without a political slant, you know. Um, if anything, I was just, I, was, I always just questioned government. You know, but I was—I never took a side. I was never on one side of the fence or the other. You know, I think if anything, it's important to be more moderate these days, <clears throat> so you don't piss off half of the populace. Everybody's got pretty has really taken sides these days. You know, social media has a lot to do with it, and um, <clears throat> I think it would be good to if people would get a little bit more go, lean, get a little bit more toward the center again. You know, because uh, I think just a few years ago we were kind of more toward the middle. And uh, and now it's just uh, it's, we, we've there's uh, just a lot of dangerous uh, ground being treaded in politics, and um, uh, I think we've regressed a lot, you know, as uh, as a as a planet, you know, because of the politics that are going on and really dirty politics these days. With your consistency and dedication over the years, for more than uh, 25 years now, it seems like you truly live and breathe uh, metal and hardcore music. A project like a Dark House for you is uh, a way to take a break from it? I always wanted to do uh, uh, music in, in, uh, in other style, I mean, I, and, but I always have, but, but not on a professional level, you know. So it was something that was always in the, back, in the background, you know, I'd sit and play acoustic guitar and write write songs and melodies and stuff and, and, and sing in a melodic way and um, uh, but it was just as a hobbyist you know I never really uh, had bigger aspirations you know outside of propane in terms of uh, my musical career is concerned but um, there came a time when propane was not so busy and um, I said hey this could be a, a good opportunity for me to do something else you know and uh, and it could also be good for propane, you know, because it's completely completely different uh, style from from what propane's doing, and it allows propane to stay really heavy, you know, if if I write a lot of melodic stuff for Dark House. So with Dark House, I started off writing a fair share of the music and all of the lyrics and all, all of the vocal melodies too, and um, all of the all of the demo stuff that we did with Dark House, I sang the lead vocals on. And uh, then we would give it over to uh, Kenny, Kenny Hamlin, the, 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 the lead singer of the band. So since we are talking about some more melodic music, the last question that I always like to ask is uh, what is your <coughs> musical guilty pleasure? Something that your fans might be surprised that you like to listen to? Oh, 
I think they would probably be, be surprised at most of what I listen to. I listen, I like a lot of 70s soft rock, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. I like bands like Bread and Seals and Crofts. And I like uh, classic rock, I like ELO. I like Boston, I like Kansas and Styx. Um, I like some more progressive stuff from the old days like uh, Gentle Giant and uh, Frank Zappa. I like uh, folky stuff from like Cat Stevens. Um, I like Yes, Super Tramp, um, mostly older stuff, you know, but, but uh, um, I guess stuff from the era of when, uh, you know, I was purchasing albums and, you know, that, uh, the, the, the music that really uh, um, spoke for my childhood, you know, my, myself growing up as a, as a musician. Are you a music collector today? Not really. Unfortunately, I wish I was. It's cool, man. When I see somebody that has this tremendous record collection, it's just amazing. Yeah, really. I, I think so too. I love uh, peering through yeah. uh, different vinyls and stuff like that. It's cool. Yeah, it's the best. <laughs> yes. Okay, awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>